right now, the majority of our customers are on the energy storage space. Uh, and uh, that's obviously a huge market. And, you know, you, you touched on the two main markets being EV and energy storage. Uh, so energy storage is, is the main sort of um, market for our customers that we have today. Uh, in saying that uh, it's interesting with, you know, what you bring up about sort of the customers we've had in the past also groups that have bring up, well, you know, oh, your technology doesn't have sort of the cell energy or um, uh, that, that, you know, the, the nickel, the nickel rich sort of cathode technologies have. Uh, and uh, it's sort of, you know, it's, it has, you know, more energy um, uh, than sort of an LFP battery, but you know, uh, the LFPs aren't, you know, uh, aren't for, you know, the EV space and it's more sort of your nickel rich tech, um, cathode technologies. Well, you look now that, you know, Tesla's going down the path where uh, LFP batteries are being used in their products. Uh, and we've got something that has more density and more energy by a factor of about 20% and higher voltage than what they have. Yet it has the same sort of uh, performance attributes that an LFP battery has as well. So uh, typically sort of uh, the uh, phosphate uh, based batteries uh, uh, have sort of greater safety attributes, which we have being a phosphate based um, technology as well, but we've got the energy um, that isn't at the level of the nickel um, uh, cathode technologies, but isn't that far off either. So uh, it's sort of the best of all worlds. And then what that means, uh, sort of having sort of a phosphate uh, based uh, cathode technology from a cost point of view, we're at the cost of an LFP battery as well. So you've got the safety, you've got the cost um, and you've got the greater energy as well. So we think that, you know, our technology literally ticks all the boxes that are out there in saying that, it, it, you know, the market is so large at the moment. Uh, anyone who's able to produce cells uh, has, you know, a line out the door of groups who are wanting to, you know, purchase their cells. It is just there is that great of a shortage. So hence why I think we're in the right place at the right time uh, from a market point of view, but also from the US point of view where we've got a supply chain today that is 80% um, in the US, so US manufacturers, and the remaining 20% is either you know European groups or groups who are in mainly out of Japan and Korea who are providing us with all the all, all the um, materials or, or all the um, parts required for our batteries, uh, which is another sort of, you know, key attribute about what we are able to produce. Uh, but in the US, I think they've sort of lagged behind when you look at all the other sort of major uh, um, areas of uh, cell manufacturing and the major ones being Asia and um, Europe. And you see the amount of plants that are coming on in Europe and the amount that Asia has. Uh, so I think the, the US have sort of lagged behind and we want to make sure that, you know, uh, not only do we, you know, come online with our plant that can produce 1.8 gigawatt hours of production, but we're try the, the internal lane is to get by 2025 to double digit um, gigawatt hour production. Uh, so yes, it might sort of seem like it's sort of, you know, um, aggressive, uh, but, you know, that is, th that is what we have in place as our goal. Uh, so the plan is to grow exponentially as quick as possible. We want to be a major player in the US market and hopefully globally down the track as well. But at least in the US, we want to be that huge player in there and, um, or one of the major players in there and uh, providing batteries, uh, both for the energy storage market, but also for the huge growing, uh, large growing um, uh, EV market as well.